Hi again, everyone, and welcome to our Chefs for Chefs event today. Thank you so much for joining, and please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat where you're joining us from, and feel free to share if you have a favorite color food you like to eat. So whether you're cooking along or sitting back and enjoying the show, go ahead and raise your hand to unmute yourself if you feel like doing so at any point in time. And of course, you have the chat box if you want to ask any questions or chat amongst yourselves as well. So let me introduce myself to those of you who don't already know me. I am Sylvia Ng, and I am a culinary nutritionist, and I created Chefs for Chefs, which stands for Charities Helping Everyone for SEVA. So I basically pair up with all of my talented chef friends and offer virtual cooking classes to all of you so that we can have fun, you know, just cooking and learning in the kitchen while raising money and awareness for charities and organizations around the world. So I think for me, I realized that I really like the color purple. Um, I love purple colored foods. I love purple cauliflower, purple carrots, uh, purple potatoes, purple onions, purple beets, you name it. I love purple everything. So uh, to me, purple just really pops out and I love eating it. So the last event, we were cooking with Chef Golda Ewalt and she was talking all about fermentation while making homemade kimchi, along with some kimchi recipes, including a kimchi soba noodle salad and a delicious kimchi pancakes, yum. And we are raising money for the Wholesome Food Fund this month, which allows people to double up their SNAP dollars um, which, as most of you probably already know, is formerly known as food stamps. So this way people can buy twice the amount of fresh or local produce to increase healthy food access and affordability to address food insecurity. And it's been over 50 years since the first and only White House conference on food, nutrition, and health that sets food policy agenda for the future. So it's about time that this September we acknowledge and prioritize the importance of healthy food and hunger um, and how that affects diet related diseases and health disparities in our country. So today I am cooking up some rainbow summer rolls with a peanut dipping sauce, which believe it or not, Chef Golda actually taught me how to work with rice paper about 10 years ago. So this is kind of um, paying homage to, you know, all that Chef Golda has taught me and throughout the years. So I am making these because one, the weather is getting warmer out and these would be perfect on a light and uh, you know, a fun summer dish. Two, it's National Pride Month, so it's all about the rainbow. And three, I'm gonna show you what to make with any and all of the leftovers you might have from chopping up all of the vegetables. So summer rolls are something fun that you can make for a weekend brunch, uh, a lunch, some appetizers, or even for dinner tonight. And they're great because they're simple and you can fill them with whatever you like. So you can serve them family style so that everybody makes their own, which essentially saves you time. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's just great because you can fill it with whatever you like. So let's get started with the cooking. Um, I'm first just gonna heat up my pan without any oil first. And I'm gonna be using a toasted sesame oil and it does have a little bit of a stronger flavor than um, untoasted sesame oil. Um, I also like using this for this recipe because the sesame I think really goes well with the tofu, but if you don't have sesame oil or you have a sesame allergy, you can always just use extra virgin olive oil as well. So I'm just gonna wait for this to heat up a little bit before I add in the sesame oil. Actually, you know what? It's heating up pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna pour maybe about a half a teaspoon in there. And while that's heating up, um, I am gonna be slicing my tofu. So I usually just buy the organic tofu. They come in you know, one pound blocks. Uh, sometimes they come in eight ounce blocks, depends on where you buy it from. But generally there's like a little liquid inside that they're sitting in. So what I do is I cut open the package and then I drain out the liquid. And then um, if I'm not using the whole block, I actually just store it in some cold water to make sure that it doesn't dry out in the refrigerator and so that it stays nice and moist. So I have about eight ounces here left from my dinner the other night. So what I'm gonna do is just drain it out in the sink. And then you could pat it dry on some paper towels, but I kind of get a little bit lazy to be honest. <laughs> so I actually just go straight into cutting it. And so let me throw on my, uh, my screen for my cutting board so I can put that on the spotlight and you can see what it is that I'm doing. 
So here, hopefully you can see this block of tofu. I'm actually just gonna cut it into little strips because if we're gonna be making these summer rolls, I want them to be kind of like long, thin rectangles. I'm gonna cut them maybe about four or five that way. And I'm gonna turn them on its side. And then I'm gonna cut them again into maybe thirds. Um, just remember that the longer and thinner the, uh, the strips of tofu you make, the, hard, the easier they might be to, uh, to break apart in the pan. So I'm just gonna swirl this sesame oil around now that it's heating. And oh, people always ask me what kind of pan I use and I'm just using a green pan. Um, for something like this, um, it is relatively nonstick, although sometimes when I say that and I do this on camera, it suddenly becomes not nonstick. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put these gently into the pan and I'm just gonna sear them probably on two sides. And I'm gonna flip them over when it's nice and golden brown on one side. And I always notice on my pans that the edges tend to not cook as quickly as the ones in the middle. So I just wanna um, keep my eye on them and move them around when I, when I need to. Hopefully you can hear that sizzling of it. And a lot of the times when people are uh, saying to dry it on paper towels, it just makes it extra crispy. It just makes it uh, crisp up a lot faster and sometimes a little nicer. But like I mentioned, I, I can be a little impatient when I'm cooking. <laughs> so let me clear this off. Add that in there. And then just wipe, wipe the cutting board there. Okay, and see, I have this beautiful head of purple cabbage. Like I mentioned, um, purple is one of my favorite colors. So I love cooking purple foods. And I love using purple cabbage because one head of cabbage literally makes a lot. <laughs> and the way I'm gonna cut this is just to cut it basically like how I would cut a pineapple. You know, there's a core in the center of it. I'm gonna cut it in half and then you'll see that there is um, this little core over here, which I'm gonna cut out. So I'm gonna cut this half in half again. And then I'm gonna just turn it on an angle and cut it diagonally so that I just cut out the core. And I'll throw this into my compost. And then I'm just gonna do the same for the other, for the other part. So hopefully you can see that. And I'm just gonna cut it on a little bit of an angle. And I'm probably gonna save some of this for a future dish just because there's so much. <laughs> um, but what I like to do is actually do a lot of prep ahead of time. So what, even though I'm probably only gonna use about half of this head of cabbage, um, I'm actually just gonna chop it up and save it for, um, some other dishes that I might cook down the line in this week. I'm just gonna cut it in half and then I'm just gonna shred the cabbage like this and you'll see how quickly this goes. A lot of people don't, a lot of people don't love cabbage because when you cook it, it releases these uh, gaseous smells, I'll put, I'll put it that way. Um, and then it becomes kind of like soggy and then it just kind of isn't so super appealing, you know, but that's why I love leaving this raw. First of all, it's less work for me to do. And secondly, um, you know, you don't have that smell that some people are just like, like, ugh, like, what is that <laughs> when they walk in the door? So what I'm going to do is actually shave a quarter of it for my summer rolls. And then I'm going to shave maybe half of it for my bonus recipe, which you'll see is coming up. And then the other half, I'm just gonna shave and keep in, chew and keep in the container. So again, I'll just take this, slice it down the middle, and I'll slice this one down the middle. And then I'll just slice these all together that it goes even faster. 
that way I know if I'm, you know, making a salad for lunch one day, it's easy where I can just take some of this and put it into my salad and add some really nice color and some really nice crunch to it. Um, cabbage lasts a pretty long time. So this will probably last me a week before I can get through all of it. You know, the um, cabbage is actually related to the kale and broccoli family, which people are kind of surprised about sometimes, but they have a lot of really great anti-cancer properties. So I would say, you know, if you can add this into little bits of your meals throughout the week, it's gonna be super beneficial for your health. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the, the chemicals that are in there because <laughs> I remember I was kind of tongue-tied when I had to do it for a live demo. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pack this container full of cabbage so I have it stored for the rest of the week. Batch cup, batch cooking and batch prepping are like my favorite things to do to save me time and also to save me energy throughout the week because let's face it, we all have a busy lives, you know. Yeah. And I'm gonna keep this in the fridge. So if you don't love purple cabbage, you could also use green cabbage for this recipe, but like I mentioned, purple is one of my favorite colors. So I'm sticking with this purple. <laughs> and then next, I am actually going to take some of my uh, tricolor carrots. Um, again, we've got purple carrot here. Um, I also have orange and yellow carrot. And I love the tricolor carrots because, you know, basically when there's a lot of different colors in your food, um, they, they offer a lot of antioxidants. Um, and different phytochemicals. So I say it's worth paying the extra 20 cents to buy the tricolor ones as opposed to the ones that are all orange. And what I like to do is I don't even bother peeling them. Um, you know, I buy the organic carrots. And what I do is I do take a peeler, but I actually use it to shade the carrots. So I will just take, you can see hopefully here in the camera. I'll just take my peeler and I'll shade the carrot. See, it still has the, uh, the peel on it, but I'm doing this just so I can get some really nice um, carrot shading from this. And this is exactly what I do for all of my salads. Um, and since we want them to be thin um, to fold into our summer rolls, um, this is the perfect way to get, you know, nice thin carrot strips without, um, you know, without having to use a knife. So let's say you have uh, some kids who maybe aren't old enough to be working with carrots. You can uh, be working with knives at least um, because carrots are kind of hard and they roll around. And, you know, if you're afraid of your kid getting uh, cut using a knife, just give them a peeler and then just teach them to peel and shave the carrots this way. You know, I always tell people when, I, when, you, shave, when you peel the carrots with a peeler, you know, what percentage of that carrot are you losing for no good reason? You know, a lot of people will just uh, peel off, you know, maybe five, 10% of the carrot. And I'm just like, you know, you pay for the whole carrot, you might as well eat it, right? <laughs> just make sure you rinse it off well um, in the sink before you do. But yeah, some, some people, when I tell that to some people, they get a little freaked out, like, oh my gosh, you don't peel the carrot. I'm like, no, I'm like, it's perfectly edible. So why would I bother? throwing it out, right? I'm just all about that no waste, um, no waste in your, in your cooking. So I love the purple carrot because when you, when you shave it, you realize that the inside is actually yellow and only the outside is purple here. And what a lot of people don't know is that historically carrots originally started off as purple. Um, and then some, I, I want to say sometime in like the 16th or 17th or 18th century, some people, I think in the Netherlands, maybe <laughs> decided to breed them to be orange. I don't know the exact story behind that, but I'm glad that purple carrots are back. You know, I love all of the different colors, you know, carrots don't just have to be orange. 
So here you go. You have these nice thinly shaved carrots and you have all different colors of them too. All right, and then next I'm gonna take some of my, um, some of my peppers. Actually, what I'm gonna do is, just kidding, I'm gonna shave some into this big bowl here. This is kind of like my bonus recipe, what I do with like all of my leftover vegetables. I'm just gonna shave this really quickly in here. And I'm keeping an eye on my tofu to make sure it is cooking properly. I have the heat on about a medium high heat. Um, but of course, you know, everybody's stove is uh, different and I just have a little electric burner here. So um, out of a, let's see, five is the highest heat and I have it on a four right now. And it is crackling real good. And carrots, I know, you know, carrots are something that everyone's like, oh, you should eat it because it's good for your eyes, because it has the beta carotene in it. But, you know, eating carrots is just healthy for you overall. You know, I know everybody likes to uh, pinpoint why you should eat this, why you should eat that. You know, it's just, it's healthy for you. Just eat it. <laughs> um, okay, so next I'm just going to take my, uh, my little mini bell peppers here. I have some in all different colors. Um, again, I love to grab the, uh, the reds, the oranges, the yellows, the greens. The greens I didn't uh, see, so I just grabbed a package of these little ones. And what I'm gonna do is actually just take off the top here. And then I have these, uh, I have these, so you can either just take off the top like what I did there and, and you have these little strips or you can kind of do what I normally do with uh, bell peppers is I take, I take it and I stand it up on its side and then I cut it down that way. So that way it's easier to cut into strips for our recipe. So either way, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Just do whatever feels easiest to you. Let's see, I have, yeah. And you know what? People always get a little freaked out about the seeds in uh, bell peppers, but if you've got a few in there, just, I wouldn't even worry about it. I actually like eating it in there because it's leaving it in there because then it kind of adds a um, sort of another texture to it, you know, and it's perfectly okay to eat the seeds of peppers. And what I've done lately, um, between last year and this year is if I have these uh, little seeds, these little bell pepper seeds, I will actually save them and dry them. And then the next year I plant them in the ground and I end up with these cute little pepper plants. I haven't really had a chance to, um, you know, <laughs> reap the rewards from from that yet, I mean, I have grown little peppers, but they definitely don't grow into these like gigundo ones you see in the supermarket. And, you know, it's only June right now. So they're just little plants with leaves on them right now. <laughs> I'm gonna take these, add them to my plate over here. And I'm just putting them on a plate so that it's easier to build our, um, build our summer rolls when I just have them all laid out. And so for my bonus recipe, you can still cut it into strips or you can cut it into cubes. It doesn't really matter. What I like to do is sometimes just slice these uh, little ones in half or in quarters if they're a little bit bigger. And then I just like to um, cut them into little chunks. Kind of like that. And then I just cut around the stem. So if you really want to go the no waste route, a friend of mine actually will take these uh, bell pepper stems and middles, kind of like that, and she'll actually toss it in a little bit of olive oil 
and roast it in the oven and make almost like a bell pepper relish using the um, using the stalks, if you will, and the and the seeds. And it's actually quite delicious. So I actually love that approach. So next, I'm gonna check on my tofu and it's starting to get slightly golden, but I'm just gonna let it sit. The mistake that a lot of people make is that they are constantly like turning things and flipping things and you're not letting it sit long enough to get that golden color. So what I'm gonna do is actually just put the cover on, but kind of vent it a little bit just to make it heat a little bit more. Okay, so next, I am actually gonna start working on the dressing. Um, I have a bunch of herbs and I have some avocado for the summer roll, but I'm gonna wait to do that just because, you know, when you cut up herbs, they can, they tend to brown a little bit faster and same with the avocado. So I'm gonna get started with the dressing and I'm gonna make twice the amount of dressing because I, um, I'm actually gonna use this dipping sauce as both a dressing for my bonus recipe, um, but I can, I'm also gonna use it as like a marinade later in the week. You know, it's something great if you wanna um, marinate some tofu, marinate some chicken, um, you know, it's a peanut dressing, so it'll have a lot of flavor in it. So what I'm gonna do is just measure out my olive oil. I'm gonna measure out about a half cup. So a one-time recipe would be a quarter cup, but I'm gonna double the recipe. And so here is my, my trick. Whenever I know I'm gonna measure out something sticky, something like honey, um, I measure out the oil first so that it um, kind of coats the measuring cup. And then, so when I'm pouring the honey out, it won't get so stuck. So hopefully, You'll be able to see that how easily this comes out. And if you don't want to use honey, feel free to use your favorite sweetener of choice. And hopefully you can see that the honey is basically come right out of the measuring cup like that. Give it a few shakes. And ta-da, practically empty. And then next, I am going to measure out my rice wine vinegar. And so I really like using rice wine vinegar. Um, this is an organic one. It, um, it's not as pungent as like a white vinegar. So it's, it's actually a little bit sweeter. And usually when you make like a sushi rice, um, it, this is what they use to add to the rice. Um, to give it that kind of like sweet, sticky kind of uh, element to it. Um, and the way it's made is by fermenting sug the sugars in rice. Um, so, you know, it ends up being a little bit less acidic and a little bit more mild and, and slightly sweet compared to the regular white, uh, white vinegar. So I know, you know, Chef Golda was talking all about fermentation. So I definitely wanted to use this in my dressing. And so, so far we have equal parts of olive oil, honey, and rice wine vinegar here. So it's about a half a cup each. And then next, um, I'm gonna add some sesame oil to it. I'm gonna add about two teaspoons of this. That's my teaspoon here. Again, this is the same toasted sesame oil we used for the tofu. Teaspoons there. And then next, I'm gonna measure out my peanut butter. So I'm gonna need about um, four tablespoons of this, which is the equivalent of a quarter cup. So I am going to take this is a little rubber spatula and I'm going to use that same cup that I measured the um, that I measured the honey and rice wine vinegar in 
because it still has a little bit of that oil coated um, around the edges of the cup, it's gonna help make this slide out a little bit easier. And if you're wondering why I'm not filling it to the very top, it's because this isn't a quarter cup measure. <laughs> yeah, mine is being washed at the moment. So I'm using a third cup, but close enough. I can kind of eyeball this. And if you have a peanut allergy, you can definitely substitute it with something like tahini, um, which is made from sesame seeds. Um, it's one of the recipes I did make in one of my earlier episodes. And tahini is basically um, sesame seeds that's been ground up with a little bit of oil. Or let's say if you have an allergy to sesame seeds, you can also use something like sun butter, which is just sunflower seeds turned into a butter. <laughs> Hence, sun butter. Okay. So next I'm gonna add in my uh, coconut aminos. And this is something that we talked about with Chef Golda. Um, as you can see, this is a big Costco sized coconut aminos. <laughs> Um, it's slightly sweeter because it comes from the fermented coconut palm sap, I believe, yes. Um, and it's a great substitute for soy sauce because it is gluten-free and soy-free for those with food allergies. And it's also lower sodium, so um, which is why it has that slightly sweeter flavor. You know, it's not high sodium like a soy sauce or a tamari would be. Um, so when you are substituting for soy sauce in your recipes, just you know adjust adjust appropriately because you know if this is sweeter and less salt, then you know you'll want to adjust the salt um, and the sugar content in your recipes. So I'm going to do two tablespoons of this. And I actually love it. Um, I had a whole big thing of sushi yesterday <laughs> and I, um, you know, I had leftovers. So when I brought it home, I had it for lunch today. And, um, you know, I just dipped it in a little bit of coconut aminos and it was, for me, it's better than the soy sauce. Um, and next, um, so this one is totally your preference. If you had like sriracha, I would add a few drops of sriracha. I know my partner loves Cholula, <laughs> so I'm gonna use a few dashes of Cholula instead, um, but I love sriracha in this recipe. And um, I would probably add somewhere around, you know, half a teaspoon or teaspoon, um, just to give it a little bit of a kick. Um, you can also use red pepper flakes if you want instead. And then, Next thing I'm going to do is actually check on my tofu before I finish up this, um, this dressing recipe because I am noticing some golden brown here. I'm going to give them a little bit of a flip so it's easier to uh, turn them with my chopstick. Thankfully, that did work out with the nonstick. <laughs> so I'm going to take some of this. It is going to be a little bit delicate because it's only toasted on the one side. Um, so I'm just going to be very careful to turn these. Yeah, which is perfect. And what I'm going to do um, is actually add a little bit of salt to it. And the reason why I don't add salt to it at first in the beginning is because it actually draws out some of that moisture. Um, which makes it a little bit difficult to get that brown color at first. These two are stuck together. There you go. And look at how nice and golden the tofu looks there. Um, you could also roast tofu if you prefer. I just like putting it into a pan because I feel like it's more controlled that way. Do something like that. Get all around the edges. And there you go. And then I'll, again, I'll put the cover on, but I'm just going to tent it because I don't want it to steam in there because then it won't get that 
um, crispiness to it. Okay, and it's looking good. And you know what? I will add a little bit of that salt now on top. Just eyeball it. There we go. And then so to finish up our dressing, I'm gonna need some ginger and some garlic and also a bit of lime juice. So I have, um, let me move this to the side so you can see my cutting board a little better. Um, so I have my, uh, my ginger here. I'm just gonna take a little spoon. Actually, I'm just gonna take one of my measuring spoons and I'm just gonna peel it just by scraping the skin. You see how easy that comes off. That prevents a lot of um, waste from the garlic. Um, if you just use a spoon as opposed to using something like a knife or a peeler. And I don't need a ton of ginger, but it smells so good right now. Um, any ginger that I don't use right now, I'll probably make a ginger tea. And I love making uh, ginger tea with some goji berries in it for a little bit of sweetness. I know my mom's always telling me to make ginger tea and, um, and then putting red dates in it. It's called hongjo. And that also adds a little bit of a sweetness to it. So you've got something spicy, you've got something sweet, and you've got an all natural tea and it tastes amazing. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then I'm just going to clear out some of these skins so that it doesn't get added to any of my other foods. So next I'm actually just gonna take a microplane. You could also just use your knife to mince it, but I like using this um, microplane to grate the ginger in there. So hopefully you can see it. Move it this way. And I like the microplane because when you're grating it, um, there's a lot of like stringiness <laughs> or fibers in, in ginger. And this actually prevents all of that stringiness from getting into your, your dipping sauce or your dressing. So you'll see on the other side, it's um, being grated very finely, which is what I like. And like I said, if you have any leftover ginger, you can always just um, throw it into a tea. So there's no waste there either. So I would say that's pretty good. I'll do a little bit more. If I were to guess, it would probably be somewhere around like maybe a teaspoon of ginger. Um, and again, this is a personal preference. If you really love ginger, you know, go for it and you know, grate like a tablespoon of ginger in there. Um, and like I said, you can, with, with everything, you can always start with a little bit and then add more later. So um, it's always safer to start with something like a teaspoon first before adding any more. And if you don't like fresh ginger or you just can't stand the work of grating it, <laughs> you can just always use the uh, powdered or ground ginger instead. Move this to the side. And I'm just gonna take about maybe two large cloves of garlic. Um, I'll take this one and then I'll take another one here. Yeah, that's good. And I'm just gonna mince some of this garlic. Um, if you, let's say you're doing a recipe with a lot of garlic, you can for sure just use one of these like garlic presses. Um, but I actually prefer to mince it by hand. I don't know, I feel like sometimes I lose some of the garlic into the garlic press. So I prefer to just, you know, peel it myself and then just mince it. I know a bunch of episodes ago, I, um, you know, did that thing where you shook it in between two bowls to get, <laughs> to get the skin off, um, which I found only works about half the time. But I think maybe one of the mistakes I made was that I didn't smush it enough before adding it into the bowl. I think it's the, uh, the friction or the static uh, 
from the shaking in the bowls that uh, removes the skin a lot easier. But I'm a little bit old school sometimes, so I just prefer to do it this way. So after I, I smoosh the garlic cloves, I actually cut the end first before removing the peel. That way it all comes off together. And I have about two, I ended up with about two large ones and two little ones. So that sounds, that sounds good to me. I love garlic though. I don't mind adding in a little bit more. Just gonna get these skins off, put it into my compost. And then I'm just gonna rinse my knife really quickly just so it doesn't have any of those little skins stuck to it. It always gets so sticky. <laughs> Um, all right, so then I'm just gonna move this. I'm just gonna cut it lengthwise first, and then I'm just gonna go back and cut them the other way horizontally. And if you like bigger chunks of garlic, you don't have to mince it. You can just leave it just like this. Um, And so what I like to do when I get it kind of rough chopped like this, I actually add a little bit of salt to it because when you add a little bit of salt to it, it'll draw out some of that liquid from the garlic. And when I mince it, it'll be easier to release those uh, juices from the garlic. And I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that um, when you mince garlic, it's best to actually just let it sit for a little while because all of the, uh, the phytochemicals that are good for you, um, they're, gonna, um, they're gonna be like amplified, you know? So take the time to mince your garlic and let it sit for a little bit. And so when I'm mincing it this way, I'm actually taking my knife and I'm kind of smushing it against the, uh, the cutting board. I don't think that's a, technical term, <laughs> but this is how I kind of learned to do it. Um, and as you'll see, it kind of just released a lot of those amazing garlic juices in there. That's gonna be good for your heart, gonna be good, great as an anti-inflammatory, um, it, and it's um, antibacterial. It's just overall good for you. My partner also swears by the fact that if you eat a lot of garlic, mosquitoes won't bite you as much. <laughs> I don't know how true that one is because I still am always getting bitten like crazy by mosquitoes. <laughs> but, you know, maybe it works for him. Or maybe they just, you know, prefer to take a bite out of me instead of him. So, okay, next I'm going to take a lime. If you don't have a lime, you could also just use a lemon. Um, but I'm just going to roll this on the cutting board. And before I slice it to juice, I'm actually gonna take my uh, microplane. And again, I'm going to zest the, some of this lime into there. Oh, I don't think you can see that. Maybe if I go over here, you can see a little better. I'm gonna take a little bit of this lime zest um, and put it into the dressing. So it's just gonna add that brightness to it. And lemons don't, at least for me, they don't seem to be quite as acidic as lemons. So, you know, when you're taking this recipe and you're using a lemon instead of a lime, you know, you might have to go back and adjust some of the, uh, the vinegar or, um, you know, add a little bit more of the lemon juice. It kind of just depends. Um, and what your personal preferences are. Okay. Next, I'm gonna slice this line. And we'll probably only need about a quarter to a half of it. I can take this. Take this, squeeze it into here. And then I think this is, aside from salt, this is probably one of the last things um, we need to add to this recipe. 
So I'll probably only add like a quarter teaspoon of salt to start with, then I'll whisk it up and um, see if it needs a little bit more after that. I know this, uh, this dipping sauce or this dressing looks a little luck uh, right now, <laughs> but when I whisk it and it comes all together, it's gonna look way better, trust me. Let me just rinse my hand real fast. I'm just gonna take this. And then I'm just gonna whisk it. And it'll come together real nice, should anyway. So I love this because, you know, like I mentioned, it's so versatile. It can be used as a dipping sauce for our summer rolls, or it can be a salad dressing. Um, I'm actually gonna use this for my Asian slaw, which is our bonus recipe, which is basically taking all of our leftover vegetables and throwing it into a bowl <laughs> and mixing it with the dressing. There you go. I'll just give it a quick taste. Just use my measuring spoon. Mm, it tastes really good. It is actually a bit acidic for me. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more of the olive oil to kind of balance it out. Um, the salt's good. Um, the sweetness is good. I could actually do with a little bit less honey, but again, it's your personal preference. I think when you mix it in with everything, it'll be really delicious. Yeah, that's really good. Just like that. Our dipping sauce and dressing is all done. Put that to the side. And I'll just check on our tofu. It looks like it's just about done. So I am going to turn the heat off. Give it a little bit of a shake. Yeah, it looks great on all sides, on uh, both sides. Looks nice and uh, golden, basically. So I'm gonna let this cool. Um, see, I'll put it on a little plate so it cools faster. Um, but before I do that, I'm actually going to add a little bit of the coconut aminos to it to give it that slightly um, sweet, salty flavor. It's going to bubble a little bit, so I'll just do it here. Just give it a little bit of a toss. And that should be good. So I'm gonna keep this over here on this plate so it'll cool faster. And I'll move this pan to the side. And it already smells so good. I'm gonna move this over here. I'm gonna keep this over here. I almost kind of just want to like eat one right now, <laughs> which I might do, but no, I will, I will hold off. I have more self-control than that. Um, so great. Next, um, I think we're about ready to slice our avocado and also our herbs. So here today, I just have some, um, I have some scallions. You'll see I have some scallions that I picked from the garden. Um, I've got some lovely cilantro and I've even got some mint. If you like something like Thai basil, that's also a great one to put into this recipe. So I'm gonna chop up the scallions first. Um, as you can see, I um, let them grow a little bit larger than I wanted to <laughs> in the garden. So these things are pretty big. So what I'm gonna do is just slice it um, kind of into quarters first, and then I'm gonna slice it again. So I can just get these little pieces of scallion. 
What you could also do is just leave them in strips, but I feel like when you end up eating it in the summer roll, it's just gonna come out with the rest of the filling. So I like to just chop it a little finely first. And that was just one scallion, but I'm actually gonna cut up some more scallion for our, um, for our Asian slaw. So again, these, <laughs> these scallions got really big in the garden to the point where they're almost flowering and uh, coming to seed. So normally you wouldn't have to slice it down the middle like this, but these are huge. So I'm gonna have to do that. Um, Look, I mean, I think if you've watched any of my previous episodes, you'll know how much I love scallions <laughs> and how I love uh, replanting the scallions, you know, cutting them down to the white bit and then replanting them. I mean, I literally have scallions like all year long. I left the cover on this bowl. So let me add that to the Asian saw. And then I'm going to add this. Yeah, over here, Oops. clean up the cutting board a little bit. And then next I'm gonna, gonna uh, take some of these cilantro leaves. Um, and I don't like to waste all of the cilantro. So what I'm gonna do is just um, for my summer rolls, I'm just gonna kind of lightly chop off the tops of the leaves because I like putting them into the summer rolls like almost whole. Um, it also just makes it look really pretty. You'll see. And then with the rest of it, I'm just gonna chop it up and put it into my Asian slaw. Dens and all, don't waste them. I've worked in a lot of restaurants where they used to make us, you know, take off all of the leaves of the stems. I'm just like, why? Like, and then we'd have to throw out the stems and I'm like, why are we wasting all that? <laughs> you know, I get the fancier restaurants. They're just like, oh, we don't want stems in our food, but there's so much flavor in there. And I'm, as you know, all about the no waste cooking. So I'm tossing it all in there. And then for the mint, um, I mean, you don't really want to eat a whole piece of mint, right? I mean, you can, if that's what you like, but I'm just going to take some of these and um, oh, this. These are cilantro here, so I'll chop those up. Um, I'm just gonna take some of these, and for these, yes, I am just gonna take the leaves off the stems, just like that. Um, but what I'm gonna do is save the stems and make um, a mint tea using them. So that is perfect for a refreshing summer drink. And if you have some of these bigger mint leaves, um, you know, you could just rip them in half. Something like, you know, something that's that size, you don't wanna take one full bite of that. So you can just rip them down the middle. It's kind of like that. And I will add that to our plate. And our plate, as you can tell, is probably getting very, very colorful here. And I will hold that up for you to see. See all the beautiful colors of our uh, vegetables here. And so the last thing that we have left to cut is our avocado. Avocado. I feel like every time I use avocado in a recipe, I have to wear the avocado apron. <laughs> it, it is a must. With the leftover mint, like I said, you can make um, a mint tea. And since we have some lime juice, um, what I would do is probably just boil some water um, and then turn, and then once the water comes up to a boil, then I would add the mint leaves to it. Um, and then I would probably just take a, a squeeze of uh, the remaining lime and juice it right into there with a small teaspoon of honey. And that can be a super refreshing uh, summer drink. So when I, do, um, when I do cooking demos, I like to always have backup avocados in case the first one doesn't turn out so great. Um, but hopefully these feel very ripe, almost to the point where they're almost too ripe, but they look pretty good. See, see, they look great. 
Um, so for this, I'm just going to want uh, avocado slices. So let me turn it this way so you can see. Just gonna, as you can see, I have all of the herbs kind of stuck <laughs> onto my knife, but that's totally fine. And then we're going to take a spoon and I'm going to scrape it out. And you should get these really nice avocado slices. Um, kind of like that. Just kind of like, like that. I'm going to add that to our plate here. And then I'm going to take my knife down on the, the seed and then pull it out. Again, I'm just going to make very thin slices here. Make them as thin or as thick as you like. When I was having sushi yesterday, um, a bunch of people were telling me how they're like scarred by <laughs> buying avocados because it just, you know, sometimes they'll get the brown ones or, you know, it won't ripen very well. And the key for me is that when I buy them, I, um, I keep them in a paper bag. Um, so, you know, I'll buy like maybe five at a time or something like that. And then I'll keep it in a bag and then I'll kind of check them on a daily basis because they're almost always hard when you go to buy them. And then when they start to feel a little soft, you're like, oh, okay, like how many can I eat today? <laughs> and then um, I would just um, stick it in the fridge once they start to get soft enough. Go. And I will probably gnash on that avocado in a little bit. So let me just clear my cutting board here. And throw all this stuff into the compost. Just to clear off my board, keep the lime, keep the mint. And then I think I can probably get rid of the cutting board now because I think I've cut everything. Rinse my hands. And so for a dish like this, if you don't want to use tofu in it, you can definitely use some like shredded chicken. Um, you can use some, you know, tuna or salmon, um, whatever you like in there really. I'm gonna clear out this cutting board here. And then, um, so I have a plate, um, it's just a regular old plate, <laughs> but it's a regular round plate, but it's big enough for my rice paper rolls because what I'm gonna wanna do is put some warm water in this plate. And then I'm gonna wanna rehydrate those rice paper rolls. And you'll see what I'm talking about. It might be a little bit hard to see because the rice paper rolls are like white and clear, <laughs> but hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna take my beautiful plate here. And then I'm gonna take these they're called spring roll rice wrappers. Um, basically they cut, I think they're about six inches in diameter and they're very thin. Um, you know, as you can see, they're very thin. And what I'm going to do is just put this into the water and rehydrate it. Um, I totally lied and I do need that cutting board back <laughs> because um, I'm going to need to roll these spring rolls in something. I'm going to put this here. I'm totally going to do the chef thing where I just flip it over. <laughs> There we go. Clean cutting board. Ta-da. Um, these, the water is a little bit on the cold side right now. So maybe I need to just add a little bit more warm water to it. Um, I went to my partner's nephew's birthday once and um, they were having us dip these uh, rice paper rolls into like boiling water. And I'm like, uh, I don't think it needs to be boiling because <laughs> these tend to fall apart very quickly. 
So um, the hotter the hotter the water, the faster this is going to get rehydrated. So as you can see, it's already um, getting very soft. I'm just going to wait for it to get a little bit softer before I start rolling it. And so the first time I ever did this was with Chef Golda. It was at one of her awesome holiday parties, of course. And um, she was teaching us how to make these and I had never worked with rice paper before. So it was, it was a first for me. Uh, okay, so now you can even see how thin this, it, get, it gets very clear and it gets very thin. So what I'm gonna do Let's put this on my cutting board and it's very delicate. So it's very prone to ripping very easily if you're not careful. Next, here comes the fun part. <laughs> Once you have all of your beautiful ingredients prepared, um, just start layering in some of the ingredients. So I'm gonna put the avocado down first because I love the way that looks on the outside and I love avocado. And then I'm gonna take just like, you know, one of each color bell pepper. I'm gonna take, you know, a strip or two of each of the carrots. And remember that what you put down first, that's what's gonna be on the outside. So I want that purple to show. Um, I also want some of these cabbage, the purple cabbage. I want a little bit of greens, very light on the greens, but I'm gonna take the cilantro, the cilantro leaves, place them outside. And so as some of you or most of you know, I'm part of the Academy of Culinary Nutrition. I'm a, one of their graduates and I, um, you know, I'm part of their Facebook group and somebody had made these and they had these edible flowers that they had put into the summer rolls and they looked absolutely beautiful. So if you have ed access to some edible flowers, I would definitely recommend, you know, using some of those. So I'm gonna take my tofu strip here. I'm gonna put it inside. And then the next part is the tough part. Well, it's not tough, but here's like the moment of truth. You're gonna wrap this like a burrito. <laughs> you're gonna fold it over once. You're gonna fold over the edges. And if you're like me and I'm, I tend to uh, overstuff things <laughs> like this, um, you could totally leave one of the ends open and it's totally cool. Like it won't matter at all. It'll actually look really pretty that way. And then just roll it up. And if it rips, it won't really, you can't even really tell because you have it all, um, you have it all uh, wrapped in the rice paper. So look how pretty that is, yay. So I'm gonna keep this on the side. And that water is now warm enough. I'm gonna replace the water just because this water was a little bit too cold. I'm just going to show you a few more of these. And so, like I mentioned, I went out for sushi yesterday and they had these, uh, these garnishes. Um, if you've ever seen them, they're super pretty. They have like, um, you know, there's always like uh, an orchid and then there's like, uh, you know, some of this shredded stuff, you know, you've got shredded beets. And if you ever see this shredded white stuff, um, it's actually daikon. Um, and I know Chef Golda was using daikon in um, her recipe for kimchi. So don't throw it out. It's totally edible. Um, and I would even recommend putting it, um, putting a little bit on top of your sushi. And so what we might do here today is actually use some of this garnish and put it inside of our summer roll. Like why not, right? <laughs> so let me put that to the side. I can move this now. And if you don't want to use rice paper rolls, you can actually use uh, 
uh, nori instead, like sushi nori. So you can use, you know, if you can't find spring roll wrappers somewhere, um, you could totally use a lot of these same fillings for to make your own vegetarian sushi at home. And I'll tell you, there was one time where my mom and I, <laughs> we had a bunch of those seaweed snack wrappers. We had just had like a lot of them. I think we had bought them from Costco or something. <laughs> Um, and we wanted to make sushi, uh, but we didn't have like the full size sheets of nori. So we just used the little snack wrappers instead. <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun, I will say. Um, it was a little bit challenging to wrap it, but it still tasted great and it still worked out totally fine. So I'm just gonna let this submerge a little longer. Um, and it's almost there. Yeah, this water is a little bit warmer. It's like a little bit warmer than room temperature. So um, this is gonna rehydrate a little bit faster than the last one. And what you could do is if you know that you're gonna make a bunch of these, just have like a tray of them, or you know, after you take out one, after you take out one, um, just put in another so that the next one's ready to go. And so it does require a little bit of delicate work, um, but this is a really fun one for kids, I will tell you. They might get a little frustrated at first if they, um, you know, if they can't get the, uh, the rice paper to not, you know, crack or break. Um, but that's just another lesson in like, hey, just like learn to let it go. Like, it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And for somebody who had a, quite a bit of OCD growing up, um, you know, that's something that I have to remind myself every now and again, you know. So I'm just, this time I'm gonna put the cilantro down first, and then I'm gonna put the, uh, the mint there. And then I'm going to put the, I'll put the pepper. And so let's say at the end of the night you have, um, you know, a bunch of these vegetables left over. That's where this Asian saw comes in. That's where this big bowl of chopped up vegetables comes in. You just, you know, let's say we have a bunch of the carrots and the peppers left over. I mean, you can just literally toss it into the bowl and you've got a great Asian slaw to um, either accompany the dinner or you can, um, or you can just save it for like a lunch for the next day. I love these purple carrots, so I want to put in a few more. Um, and this is great if you serve it family style like this, where you have everything um, separated out. You can just have people make their own. You know, if they like a little bit more cabbage, they can put more cabbage in there. If they like more avocado, put more avocado in there. I'm going to take some. Oh, what I didn't mention is that I have some leafy greens here. I kind of just took it from the fridge some leafy greens. If you have spinach, you can add spinach in there. Um, I'm gonna put the tofu, tofu strip on there. Then I'm gonna cover it with some avocado. And you know, it's like an art piece really. Um, it's an art piece that you can eat. It's in my opinion, you know, some of the best kinds of artwork. <laughs> So just probably why I like working in, you know, the food industry. And so since, like I mentioned, I kind of overstuffed this one, I'm going to leave one end open so that it's kind of like, um, so that I, so I'm going to leave one end not folded over. And then I'm just going to gently roll this up. And there you go. You have another sun, rainbow summer roll. So here I have two. It's gonna be good. I think you get the picture by now. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is just um, put a little bit of the dipping sauce into uh, beside the plate. And I have one of these cute little, cute little dishes, which is perfect for my dipping sauce.
There you go. And then maybe I'll actually slice one of these in half so you can see what it looks like. Kind of really want to eat this right now. <laughs> oh, interesting. I'm going to slice these. So you can see what it looks like in the middle. Um, there you go. And then this is what it looks like in the middle. Super pretty, right? So many colors. And so I'm just going to kind of plate it like this. I'm going to put a little bit of the of this sauce into this bowl. Thing. And what I might do, I have some chopped peanuts that I might just add for a little bit of um, a garnish. Oh yeah, I'll grab some of those out. Put peanuts on top. There you go. And there you have it. We have our, I'll use this one. We have our uh, rainbow summer rolls with a peanut dipping sauce. So let me hold it up to the other one actually, because maybe that one looks, looks better. So basically what I did was just chop up a bunch of vegetables. I had a bunch of herbs and I rolled it in some rice paper roll. <laughs> um, that was about it. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. And yet at the same time, it'll, I know it'll be delicious. And so for my Asian slaw here, I just, I'm just gonna take some of this um, peanut dipping sauce and then just use it as my uh, dressing for this Asian slaw. So I'm just gonna eyeball a little bit, give it a toss. And then that is like our bonus recipe here. And it's so colorful and it smells delicious. And if you're just feeling really lazy, <laughs> you could just take this Asian saw and stuff it right into the rice paper rolls. Don't even bother with, you know, layering it in there. But I kind of like that part of it because it kind of slows you down from eating. And if you're like me, I tend to eat very quickly, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so if you're having to build each one of these um, summer rolls, like one by one, um, it kind of slows you down and it really lets you appreciate all of the um, all of the food that you've created. Um, and there you go. That is my easy uh, Asian slaw recipe, which I know my family has probably seen before. <laughs> I've made it at, um, you know, with Chef Golda before for a number of different occasions, but it's always a hit. I mean, people love it. So see how colorful it is. Um, you can add this on top of leafy greens. You can serve it with some grilled chicken for the summer, um, or you've got some, uh, you know, pan roasted uh, fish. I think that would go amazing as well. Um, you can always add some sesame seeds to it. You can add some peanuts to it. Um, kind of just make it however you like. So I think, yeah, I think that's that's basically it. I mean. Um, if we, if we don't have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to throw them into the chat if you do. Um, but yeah, like I said, you can actually make, you can fill these, um, however you like. Um, if you have some cucumber or some celery, or you have, um, some sweet potato, that's always a really nice one to put into the middle. Kind of like if you pan seared it similar to the tofu. It could get this really nice like golden brown um, color on the outside and then you use that instead of the tofu. Um, whatever you like, <laughs> it sounds great. I know a lot of the food I love to make is, um, you know, really light and really colorful and really fun. So, you know, that's why I love to use all the different color carrots and all the different color peppers, you know, just to make sure I'm getting a lot of the different vitamins and minerals. Um, 
lots of different antioxidants, phytonutrients in my diet. So um, yeah, it's a great way to get your kids to eat more vegetables or adults, you know, if you have some adults in the family who don't love to eat so many vegetables, um, you know, but I tell people all the time, eat your colors, you know. Um, there was one time I was, uh, you know, working with kids in the school and I created this game called Eat a Rainbow Bingo, you know, and the kids would come up to me in, in the dining room and be like, you know, they'd show me how colorful their plates were and I loved it. So, um, you know, turning your food into a fun game is always a, a good way to get other people to eat their vegetables. Um, so yeah, um, that's it. That's it for today. I think I have my dinner ready. Um, so I, I'm ready to head out soon <laughs> or sit down for a meal. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you all for, for joining. And I hope you will jump on our website to make a donation to Chefs for Chefs if you haven't already. Um, so we can continue doing these fun cooking classes and cook alongs together with some awesome chefs while raising money and raising awareness for you know, these incredible organizations. So I'm happy to put that information in the chat and also on the replay so you can all click those links. And again, I just want to say thank you all so much for joining, and I hope you all stay tuned for our next live cooking classes. So thank you all for showing up and for donating and just for being with us here today. So it's been so much fun as always, and it's great to see your faces. So thank you and bye everyone.